All right, this is my uh, senior capstone project. Um, I'm doing a more uh, art themed. Um, I did the uh, make a display of your own artwork, but um, the background of this one right here is actually a piece that I did earlier this year for my uh, AP Studio class. Um, so yeah, yeah, let's let's do it. Let's go. <laughs> what is art? I'm just gonna start off with like basically giving the general idea or definition of what art is and then you know all right so by definition art is the quality production expression or realm according to aesthetic principles of what is beautiful appealing or of more than ordinary significance the word art itself can be defined or demonstrated by many different ideas and opinions however some forms of art are considered lesser than others basically what i'm going to go over through in this powerpoint is how you know some of the how some forms of art aren't really considered art at all and others are considered you know more than others but then you know art, art itself has such a broad you know meaning it can mean so many things so all right different forms of art let's go with drawing and painting i have the starry night by van gogh and the son of man by rene Mag magritte i think that's how you say it all right when everyone thinks of true art, they assume of it a drawing, a painting, or a sculpture. A drawing can be anything that is marked on a two-dimensional medium or surface. So basically meaning, you know, a marking, any kind of, any form of marking is a drawing. You know, drawings can be made with crayon, pencils, markers, sharpies, anything. Anything, paint, a painting is considered a drawing in some, you know, forms of aspects. So... However, not every painting or drawing gets general praise by everyone. The skill of the artist and the content of the work are usually the two major factors in one's opinion of an art piece. You know, for example, if, you know, a really good drawer drew, like, a really detailed self-portrait and, you know, someone else did the exact same thing, but they don't have that much skill, you know, the people are going to look at the artist with the most skill as, you know, the better artist. You know, sometimes a content has a lot to do with it, you know. You know, not every painter or artist is going to draw, like, a beautiful landscape or a beautiful self-portrait. Like, for instance, painter Jackson Pollock. Famous abstract painter Jackson Pollock has been subjected to critical debate. Robert Coase, a critic for The New Yorker, says that a lot of his works are just unorganized explosions of random energy, as we see in this one. This is the number five that he painted in 1948. As you can see, you know, there's a lot of expression in this painting, but, you know, to just the general eye, this doesn't really, this isn't really art. This is just, you know, random explosions of just random energy, you know. All right, now we're going to go into photography. Right here, I got The Migrant Mother, who was taken in 1936 by Dorothea Lange, and I have Pepper Number 30, which was made in 1930 by Edward Weston. Now, earlier I was talking about content, you know, photography is a, I feel photography is a form of art because it can capture a story or a feeling or any kind of expression as, just as well as a drawing or a painting can, you know, but content really does have a lot to do with it when it comes to the viewer. As you can see right here, we have the migrant mother on our left, you know, that's, you know, during a really rough time. In our American history, you know, the Great Depression, they, this just shows the struggles that this single mother is going through. Now, on the right, we have a basic photograph of just a pepper. You know, to a lot of people, photography is a, isn't already an art form. And now we're just taking pictures of peppers. You know, is, is this art? Is this really considered art? Many people debate that photography shouldn't be considered a form of art. One side of the argument says that Nothing is being really created when simply just taking a picture of something that you're looking at. Others believe that the camera is just another tool for creating art. True photography is definitely a very tedious effort, which I can tell you because I'm not, I don't call myself a photographer, but I do take the classes. I have more of a respect for photography now. You know, it requires a lot of patience. Unfortunately, it would never get the credit from the general audience as it would from someone who spends countless hours in a dark room like myself. All right. Though some may believe that photography is a form of art, the content of the photograph does come into play. For example, Edward Weston, which was previously shown 
with the uh, pepper pictures known for taking pictures of different peppers or just other inanimate objects. Is that art or is that just taking a picture of a vegetable and slapping a filter on it? You know, a lot of people already don't appreciate photography as an art form, but, you know, the content of it does come into play, like I've said before. Alright, so we have two pictures right here. This, this, this goes more into the content. This is uh, Ken Moody and Robert Sherman on the left here. This was taken in 1984 by a photographer named Robert Megaford. So as we see, we just see kind of two guys looking. You know, they're bald. <laughs> and then on the right, we have The Steerage, which was taken in 1907 by Alfred Stiglitz. Now, just like the migrant mother in the previous slide, you know, The Steerage shows, you know, more... It has more content. It has a story behind it. You know, we have the lower class citizens on the bottom, and we have the upper class citizens on the top. You know, usually pictures like these are usually found in like textbooks and stuff. This is so periods of time in which you know art can art can tell a story. That's why you know when people don't really believe that photography is a form of art. You know, photography can capture memories, history, you know, all of the above. Now, with the kid, with the Robert Megaford picture, you know they they show a lot of form, you know, in their faces and their heads, and you know, you know, to the general eye, it's just you know two guys, but me knowing like I I appreciate photography a lot more, you know. Yes, at the end of the day, it's just two dudes, but you know, the way he captured you know it's not just a regular basic phone picture it's you know a very detailed picture all right now we're going to go into graphic design um you may have seen these posters around school i am a part i have i take graphics i'm in graphics too so i designed the miracle worker and the snow queen posters graphic design is kind of just like photography in a way it doesn't really get as much credit as it deserves because a lot of graphic designers you know use the computer to um, create their designs and, you know some believe that that's not art that's just you know technology you know but you still it still takes a, a creative design eye and you know not only just you know just slapping some text and some pictures on a poster like no that a lot goes into it so like I said like just like photography, graphic design is also considered to be a less skillful form of art. Some may believe that you're just in front of a computer and whatever design software, you know, does all the work for you. Graphic design is all over the place, from the logo on your favorite pair of Jordans to the posters of your favorite movies. Graphic design is literally everywhere. Someone had to design basically everything that we consume, everything, you know, that humans are. Someone designed that. And, you know, just like the definition said, you know, expression, quality, every, if, if there were no graphic design, everything would just be in a basic font, you know, just kind of really bland looking, you know, without graphic design, a lot of things wouldn't be as amusing as, you know, what they are. So yeah, graphic design is actually, is, is also really important and it is a form of art. Because, you know, you can draw, you know, with, like it, what, I, what I said before, drawing can be made with any kind of, you know, surface. You know, there's there's technology out there where you can actually draw on a tablet and the surf in the, um, in the software will, you know, draw it for you as you're drawing it on the tablet. And that's pretty cool. And I, I, I've done some of this stuff myself. All right. What makes a form of artwork better than another? This is this is also another point that I wanted to make in this in this video. All right, so we have the El Captain by Ansel Ad or El Capitan. I think I miss. I think that's a typo. We have the El Captain by Ansel Adams, and then we have Hope by Shepard Fairey. We have a we have a photo, and we have a piece of graphic design. On the left, some may argue that oh, it's just like a really nice picture of a landscape. And on the right, we can argue that, oh, we someone just took a picture of Obama and put some, 
you know, funky filter on it or some kind of, you know, design effect and put hope at the bottom. You know, the hope poster has been a very influential, very recognizable poster that a lot of people have seen before. And, you know, like... Another good example is the the We Can Do It poster that everyone sees. You know, someone designed that. That's still a form of art. You know, you can still see color. It still has a message. It has content. So, it at the end of the day, it really is art. And, well, the reason why I'm comparing these two is because these are the two, you know, cons- forms of art that are considered lesser than the other ones. You know, I'm pretty sure Shepard Fairey was on his computer got a picture of Obama, and, you know, did the stuff to it. It's a really cool design, because, you know, a lot of propaganda goes into graphic design. And the beauty about graphic design is you you can get people to follow you, you know, you you can easily manipulate people with graphic design. You know, Obama in this picture really looks like someone that you can trust. And plus, hope at the bottom, you know, that... That really even even more. Now the Ansel Adams picture, you know, it's a beautiful shot, and it, it captures that, you know, whatever he was, I guess, doing that day. He was just taking a really nice picture, you know. However, to some people, this is just a picture. So unfortunately, I didn't have the opportunity to get a lot of the um, opinions of my classmates, but. You know, whoever is made, whoever's watching this can, you know, make the opinion for themselves. Like, which which out of these two is the better form of artwork? All right, next we have another Jackson Pollock painting, and then we have The Scream by Edward Munch, or Monk. All right, we talked about earlier how people think Jackson Pollock's paintings are just random forms or random expressions of just random energy, and there's really no content behind it. Now, I'm comparing it. I'm comparing one painting to another painting because this painting has content to it. Even though we we might not have, you know, the best idea of what it means, you know, there's still some content in this painting. So like I said, I, I unfortunately don't have to we don't have the time to present this in my class, but I was gonna ask you know, a lot of people, you know, their opinions on the two paintings. Is the Jackson Pollock painting a form of art? Is the uh scream Better than convergence based on this content, you know, I was just going to have maybe some people go at it and provide different opinions. All right. Now we're just going to provide examples of my own artwork because, you know, this was going to be originally a collection of my own artwork. We have early earlier. We showed you the two designs that I made for the school. My my school's drama department, the Miracle Worker and the uh, Snow Queen. So we're just going to go through. All right, this is basically a scratch board piece I did. Um, basically, what a scratch board is, like I said, drawing is any form of marking. A scratch board is a type of surface, and then you get an, ex- an X-Acto knife, and you basically carve through. You're basically drawing in reverse. All right, this is a, this is a rattlesnake that I kind of formed into a treble cliff. You know, um, there's some roses. There's, you know, it was just... You know, it was just what I was what I was feeling that day, so to speak. All right, here's a, a drawing I did just on a regular pen and paper. Um, just have you have a look at that. All right, here is a a, a drawing I did. It has um some pastels, some um not crayons, but like colored pencil. Um, this is basically uh, based off a dream I had. Uh, I can't really remember the dream exactly, but I know at the time I was. This is basically an illustration of a dream I had. Um, next, uh, this is a friend of mine, and um, this piece is actually not finished yet. But I did want to include this into the PowerPoint because I wanted to get what people might have thought. You know, this piece was about. Alright, this is probably one of my favorite pieces. This is a pastel. A pastel painting I did. Basically just the different, you know, sides of my face. But really it was a more of a, a reflection kind of deal. Um 
yeah, I, I just really like this. Uh, really, I, I really like how this one turned out just due to the all the color. Yeah, I like pastel. <laughs> all right, this is a drawing I did of my friend Luis at the time. He had really long hair, so I was just drawing him at the time. And then at the end of his ponytail, I added a cobra. It's basically it's just self-explanatory how it is right there. Um, all right, this is another pastel piece I did. Um, I really like guitar. I know I play guitar, but um, this one really just was just all instinct. I just kind of went with it. Uh, you know, we have a tree at the bottom. When you look at it sideways on one end, you can see some mountains, and then when you look at it sideways on the other end, you can see another mountain and a sun, and then you see a bird flying. So, I, yeah, I really like this piece, too. This is probably one of my favorites out of all year. All right, this is um, probably my first or second. I think this is my second pastel piece. This is basically just a breakfast scene that I did um, just to really get used of, you know, the colors because you can get some really nice color out of pastel, but it it is it does take some time and some effort. But I really, I'm really pleased on how this one turned out too. Um, all right, yeah, this was the uh, title, the um, the one on the title slide. This is the one of Hasher I did, who's in my class. Um, a lot of this one was instinct too. Uh, the face that you see, that's upright. That was just the original drawing, but I just kind of went with it after that. And you know, we have a wolf. We have another face. Um, yeah, a lot of a lot of my artwork just comes from instinct. There's really no planning that really goes into it a lot. Uh, I'm really, I really like this one. This is um charcoal on wallpaper, so yeah, it really got those intense darks and yeah, I'm really pleased with that one too. All right, this is the last painting. Um, this is another pastel piece I just did. Um, and I I just really like like camouflage a lot and I really wanted to do a painting of you know someone behind some cam camouflage all right so that basically concludes my senior project um you know like I said unfortunately I, I wanted a lot of my classmates to debate on whether my art pieces were considered art the following examples you know the previous examples I had were considered art but that's that's about it that is about it. All right.